Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to be solving another question from the second chapter of the Mechanics of Materials by Beer and Johnson. And this one we have this 4.5 feet concrete post that is reinforced with six steel bars inside of it. So this steel bars, we're going to have six. And we know that each has a diameter of one and one eight inch. We know that the elastic modulus for steel and the concrete and we need to determine the normal stress in both the steel and the concrete knowing that the force that is applying on top the force p is 350 kips and yeah let's see how we can solve this so we know that the force to p that is applying on top would be the sum of the force in the steel and the force in the concrete and we have the same formula as we discussed in the previous video. Our delta R deformation would be force times length over uh, the area of the cross section over elastic modulus. And uh, we can see that the deformation for this steel and concrete in here is going to be the same. They're in the same height. And that's the key point in this question that we're going to have the same deformation or the elongation of these two uh it's actually they're going to be shortened because they are compressing so uh we're going to have the same deformation for each of them and uh in the formula we're just going to put s for steel in here they have the same length and this will be also equal to the force in the concrete the length is the same 4.5 feet the cross section is also different, and we're going to have a different elastic modulus too. So we know that this force in here is equal to 350 kips, which if we multiply it by 1,000, we're going to get it in pounds. And the reason we do that is that we have the elastic modulus in PSI, which is pound per, per inch squared. So that's why we need to watch for the units in here. And so based on each of these, we can find P based on delta L area and the elastic modulus, and we're going to put them uh, in this equation. So if you want to find the PS in here, it's going to be AS, ES, delta over L. And if you look at these two, so what I'm doing is basically I'm just cross multiplying. So PC is also AC, EC, delta over L. And if we put this in the previous question, or previous equation, so this one, what we're going to get is the 350 times 10 to the 3 is equal to, uh, if we just factor delta over L in each of them, we're going to have AS plus e, uh, a, a, AS times ES plus AC times EC times delta over L. And what we, what the, as I mentioned, we we're looking for the, the normal stress, which would be basically based on the Hooke's law, we're going to have elastic modulus times the strain or epsilon. And we know that epsilon is also the delta that we found in over the length so technically if we just find this value in here which is basically our epsilon uh finding the stress in each of them is pretty easy because we just have to put this strain and multiply that by the elastic module so how are we going to find the epsilon that's also pretty easy 350 times 10 to the 3 and as i mentioned the uh the, the concrete and the steels are compressed so we're going to have a negative sign since it's going to get compressed and the deformation would be negative as it's getting shortened and yeah we just have to put the area and the elastic modulus in the denominator we have the diameter for each of them the diameter of steel is one point uh one and one eighth it's going to be so 
this is going to be 1.125 1 so let's do that pi divided by 4 times the diameter so 1.125 1 squared times the elastic modulus of this steel which is 29 times 10 to the 6 and we're going to add that to the pi divided by 4 we have 18 inches for the diameter of the concrete so pi divided by 4 times 18 squared one thing that we need to keep in mind in here the cross section that we have in here has six of these little areas that we need to subtract which is basically the area of the steel and uh one thing i forgot to put in here we need to multiply by six in here so we need to multiply this by six and so here we're gonna uh, subtract that by we're gonna subtract that by the area of the steel uh, as i mentioned we're gonna have a multiply by six two and the elastic modulus of concrete is 4.2 times 10 to the 6 times 4.2 10 to the 6 and this is going to give us the epsilon we have a long ratio in here so the top part is pretty easy 350 times 10 to the 3 here we probably need multiple parentheses so we have 6 over 4 which is 1.5 1.5 times 1.125 squared times 29 times 10 to the 6 this one wasn't that bad the other one is a little bit more complicated so we're gonna have 0.25 times p times 18 squared minus uh, again 1.5 times 1.125 squared and 4.2 times 10 to the 6. I don't know why I put a negative sign in here. I also missed the pi in here. All right, so I, I basically put everything in this ratio. On the top part, we had the 350 times 10 to the 3, which is what we have at top. And I basically put whatever I had instead of 6 divided by 4, I put 1.5. And the rest of the values, again, the only thing that we need to watch for in here is just to subtract that ratio, uh, the surface area of each of these steel parts. And what we're going to get for the epsilon is 0. Point, I'm just going to show it as uh, 2.877 times 10 to the minus 4. And obviously, this is going to be a negative number. And now that we have this, this was actually the hardest part of this question to uh, find this ratio. And as I mentioned, we have sigma or the normal stress equal to the elastic modulus times the epsilon. And we're going to have the same story for concrete. Just have to use the elastic modulus for the concrete. So the normal stress that we get for each of them. So for the steel, the elastic modulus was 29 point uh, times 10 to the 6 times minus 2.877 10 to the minus 4. And what we're going to have for concrete is 4.2. Just going to double check. Yeah, 4.2 10 to the 6 times the same epsilon and let's see what we get for each of these so 29 times 10 to the 6 times 2.877 oops times minus 2.877 times 10 to the minus 4 
that's going to give us negative 8343.3 psi and if we just divide it by a thousand we're going to find it in ksi or kilo pound per inch squared now let's just find the other one, 2.4.2. Now this is going to be minus 1.208 KSI or 1208.3 PSI. I hope everything was clear. Um, it's all about the calculations as long as we watch for that area that we have in here. And yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. You guys take care. See you in the next video. Have a good one.